الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين رمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين رب اغفر لي ولوالدي إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم على إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة لترجع إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في إثباته وادخلي جنة لفضلك دعواهم فيها سبحا تحياتهم فيا سلام وآخر دوام هم عن الحمد لله رب العالم شكرا برد السنسة دي انت ذكر كاتب ان شاء الله next week we can come together here again same same time after أحسن ان شاء الله شكرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
صلى الله عليه وسلم حقا وصدقا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استقيموا واعتدلوا صلي صلاة الله وهو صلاة المغرب مستقبلا الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قنى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك مزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب اللهم سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سمع الله لمن حميده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم والتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليه ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصل عليه اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين الله لا
Assalamu alaikum brothers, please join us now in the Mazar for the lecture program. Shukran. Testing, one, two.
Do you connect that? Clean feed. Clean feed. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother wa salam, and salam alaikum to all the listeners of 786. Inshallah, okay. Alhamdulillah, the program has started on Tuesday already, and we were having a nice build up to the 10th of Muharram. You know, during this month, we, we praise the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein extensively and excessively. Not that we don't do it for the rest of the year, but we have a bit more focus this year. So, we've had various Jamaat and Tariqas presenting their form of dhikr uh, from Tuesday. On Wednesday, we had the Urs of Baba Farid, Ganji Shikar. Thursday and Friday, we also have dhikrs and, and short talks. And uh, today, the the Muharram talks are actually starting. The talks on Imam Hussein, the talks on um, on Karbala and the sacrifices of the Ahlul Bayt, that starts today. Um, within a, a, color, a few seconds, we'll be crossing to the Mazar Sharif where the lecture will start, inshallah. And the program culminates on Monday night, uh, Sunday night and Monday night with the main Ashura lectures. That will be by Hafiz Yusuf Parker of the Sunni Juma Masjid in Pelican Park. Uh, we urge everybody to please come. Monday night, Tuesday is a public holiday and the main Ashura program happens on Tuesday after Asr with the Tazia procession, inshallah. Again, we urge everybody, it is a holiday, bring your families, bring the youth especially, and they can listen to how the youth of the Ahlul Bayt made sacrifices for the Islam that we are enjoying today. وصلوات الله وسلامه على رسول الله سيدنا ومولانا محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وأصحابه وسلم. My beloved elders, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To those listening to us on Radio 786 as well as online on YouTube and Facebook. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another evening in our Muharram celebration, Muharram commemorations, Muharram program from the Habibia Sufi Masjid this year, 
We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time in three years that we have been able to gather post-COVID. And indeed, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that, that one who is independent of anything for anything. And everything is dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Thereafter, salutations upon our master, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his beloved family, the Ahlul Bayt, and our loved Sahaba. Before I begin, um, just for those who are watching online, uh, when you're on the YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, and share so that we can spread the channel and uh, so we can bring more people to these programs when they are not present here with us. But we do encourage them to please come to the masjid. The program will be carrying on for the next few days, inshallah. Without much further ado, I'm going to call upon young master, uh, Mubin Sahib, to lead some Najarif and Marcia to get the program started, inshallah. Nare Takbir, Nare Risalat. Sallallahu alayka ya Ya Rasulullah Wa sallam alayka ya Habib Allah 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 Nika Gharana Allah Allah Nika Gharana Ye Gharana Wara Ul Wara Isme Hasnain Fatima is me has in a fatima is a good on a me mushkil kusha a la la nabi ka gharana ye gharana wada wul wada Lapit is the kiri punjitaki. Poly meheki hai meri chimurki. Asa unki karamine nawaza. Asa unki karamine nawaza. Up in a kiss a metipedil chumata. Allah, Allah, Nabi ka gharana Ye gharana wara ul wara hai Ummati hoon me shahe zamar ka Hoon bikari me aaka hasar ka Ummati hoon me shahe zamar ka ho bikari me aaka hasar ka sad ke jau me un ke ata par dene wale ne sab kuch diya hai laj rak lo gadai karam ki bhar do bhar do Hamari bijoli Kyo hai koi ye na kahe kamli wale Tere mehfil se khali gaya hai Allah Allah nabi ka gharana Ye gharana wara ul wara hai Is me hasnain hai Fatima hai Is gharane Me mushkil Kusha hai Garbal Ki hai Yad aaye Garbal 
ادائی اب رو نے رولانے دو سب درد جگانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی سگرا سے کہاں شانے مت روک مجھے بیٹھے سگرا سے کہاں شانے مت روک مجھے بیٹھے دین لٹا تا ہے نانا کا سردے کے بچانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی اکبر کی شہادت پر زینب سے کہاں شانے اکبر کی شہادت پر زینب سے کہاں شانے ارمان کا یہ لاشا ارمان کا یہ لاشا مجھ کو ہی لٹانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی قرآن میرا دل ہے قرآن کے میں جاؤ کو نیزے پر قرآن سنانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی فاطمہ تو زہرہ کا ہے دودھ پیا میں نے فاطمہ تو زہرہ کا ہے دودھ پیا میں نے اس دودھ کی کربل میں اس دودھ کی کربل میں اب لا جنبانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی شبیر کا غم سائیو کر دل میں ہی رکھ لامے ہم درد کے ماروں کو آسوں کو بہانے دو کربل کی ہے آدائی اب رو نے رولانے دو سوئے ہوئے 
पहलू में सब दर्द जगाने दो कर बल की है याद आए Inside for that beautiful rendition. We know it's cold. Everybody's sitting with jackets and jerseys, but let us warm ourselves with the the love, the ishq of the Ahl al-Bayt, inshallah. Testing, uh, testing, one two, begin, one two, one two, one two, testing. The testing, the testing. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, tomorrow after Maghrib, the program is in the masjid. And we will uh, proceed with a similar program with Naat Marcia and then the lecture. And the same on uh, Monday evening, the main night, which is Ashura evening. And then the day of Ashura is a public holiday, Tuesday. So no excuses for those who uh, may be tied up in work and well, there's no school. So please do make your way to Habibia. We are commemorating the martyrdom of Imam Hussein uh, and the events of, of uh, the day of Ashura. Uh, the, the fact is that we cannot underplay our love for the Ahlul Bayt. The blood that was spilt on the plains of Karbala is the blood of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll say that again. The blood that was spilt on the plains of Karbala is the blood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, undoubtedly. Haq. And therefore, we cannot distance ourselves, like some people tend to do, from the love of the Ahlul Bayt. So without carrying on any further, I'm going to introduce you to Hafiz Yusuf Parker, Hafiz Ustad Yusuf Parker, who will be enlightening us some more regarding the events as they unfolded on the plains of Karbala. Faliya tafadl al mashkura. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Adameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلي وفاطمة حسن وحسين آله وأصحابه بعدد كل مخلوقاتك صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفيع المذنبين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله gratitude to Allah سبحانه وتعالى peace blessings and salutations upon our master our leader سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم upon his purified household أهل البيت and upon his righteously guided companions, his Sahaba, his Kiram, and all those that follow in their path, alayhim ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, this is part three of the series that we've been discussing um, for over the past two Saturdays on radio. And inshallah, it's the part one of the three-night series of discourses up until the big night, inshallah. Thus far, we've covered the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as the reign of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. And that is the righteously guided Khulafa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, including the six months of Imam al-Hassan. And that's very important for us to note. 
is that often when we speak of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, we often just hear the four names. And that is Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman and Ali. But amongst these Khulafa, it's actually five, and that's including Imam al-Hassan. After the demise of Sayyidina Ali, the reigns of Khilafa went over to Imam al-Hassan. And he reigned for approximately six months. So this is something important for us to know because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also indicated to the time span of the Khulafa. And in that time span, the Khilafa of Imam al-Hassan was included. So what we discussed last week, very briefly, was the demise of each of the Khulafa and the way in which the Khilafa was handed over and in which the new Khalif was appointed. So alhamdulillah, at this point, we have reached the seventh of Muharram al-Haram. And at this point in time, when we reflect on history, and we reflect upon these days, this is now when the atmosphere intensified in Karbala. From the seventh onwards. All these days, Imam al Hussein was in the plains of Karbala. He reached these lands. And there were still discussions going on between him and the opposition. But it intensified from this night. Inshallah, the details and the objective of these three night discourses will be to discuss the events of Karbala and most importantly to highlight the lessons that we can take. This is something that's not often discussed and as mentioned in the previous discourses um, that happened over this past week is we come to realize that it is a topic that is very much shied away from. And this is something that's important for us to note is because our entire Iman depends on this family of Rasulullah And this is something that was brought to us by the Salihin, the Awliya Allah, and especially the Astana that we are commemorating it in. The founders of these Astanas, Qibla Sufi Sahab Rahmatullah Alayhi, was very passionate when it came to this time of Muharram al-Haram. And as I mentioned on Thursday night, that he did not celebrate this Urs just on the 10th, but rather the entire 10 days, first 10 days, was the commemoration of the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein, And this is something important for us to note, is our allegiance and building that connection with the Ala Bayti Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, in tonight's discourse, we wouldn't be delving too much into the events of Karbala, but rather for us to understand the significance of this family, of the Ahlul Bayt, the importance of this family, before getting to what happened, we need to understand who this family is. Why do we show so much of reverence and importance to the Ali Bayti Rasulullah? And we will come to know the many lessons that we can take from the events of Karbala that are very much relevant to our times. And the fitnas and the types and classes of people that we see around us. And this will explain the lessons and the haqq that Imam al Hussein stood for when he stood in the plains of Karbala. So inshallah, in this few minutes that we have, we will just discuss the specialities and the characteristics of this noble family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself was aware of what is going to happen to his grandsons. If we think that Karbala just happened after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and as we know, what's commonly discussed is the celebration of Ashura and the victory of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But this is one of the ways of the Nasibis is to move us away from love and discussing the Ali Bayti Rasulullah by distracting us with the events of Karbala and the celebration that goes with it. Undoubtedly, it's a very great event that happened in Islamic history. But what hits home for us is we are from the Ummah of Rasulullah. And this happened to the family of Rasulullah from the people from his very own Ummah. So this is what affects us most. So when it comes to the significance and specialities of this family, for us to understand who they truly were, Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, they were very, very closely attached to Rasulullah. And one of the unique specialities of them was 
that they weren't referred to as grandsons of Rasulullah. Yet they were, they were the sons of Ali and Fatima, but they were referred to as Ibn Rasulullah, the sons of Rasulullah. And what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, that all the prophets and their offspring were from the loins of all the prophets. But when it comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his offspring was placed in the loins of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we know that this lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the most prestigious of lineages, the greatest, the purest of lineages. And this is what the first characteristic is their lineage and the heritage of this family. From Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, this family with this nur Muhammadi was there before Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. The nur of Rasulullah witnessed the creation of Adam. And this nur was transferred through Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And it came down from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. It comes down from men to men, passing through pure loins. None of the ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu were illegitimate. They were all pure. They were all a pedigreed line. And they came down to Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And we see that the year, Islamic year, ends off with sacrifice. And it starts again with sacrifice. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam sacrificed or was instructed to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. But instead, Allah placed the ram. And one of the reasons for that is that Nuri Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was there. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam sought permission from Ismail, O oh my son, do you accept this request? And he obviously submitted to the will of Allah. But one of the reasonings is that the nur Muhammad, out of adab for that, for this nur to continue. And this is the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu that carried on from men to men. Until it came to the Banu, Banu Kinana, the purest of tribes. And from them it went to the Quraysh. And from the Quraysh, it went to the best of tribes, the Bani Hashim. And from the Bani Hashim, it came to Abdul Muttalib. The grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then via the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the best amongst them was him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the nur split from Abdul, Abdul Muttalib to Sayyidina Abdullah and Sayyidina Abu Talib. And that is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, My offspring was placed in the loins of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because Ali is the son of Abu Talib and Rasulullah the son of Abdullah. And from there... That union then went to Fatima to Zahra and Sayyidina Ali, and from there we get Hasnain Karimain. So it's a pure lineage, it's a pedigreed lineage. One of the main specialities of this family is the lineage and the purity of the lineage. So when we discuss the Ali Bayti Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for us to truly value that there are no ordinary family. And wallahi, in these times you would realize that how sidelined the family is, people claim to love them. But how often are they spoken about? How often are they taught to our children? If we look at our entire Islamic madrasa system, how much are they taught in our madrasas and schools? And this is one of the ways of the deviance is to draw out this love of Ahl Bayt Rasulullah by not inculcating it into our youngsters. So therefore it is our duty to carry on with this, to teach it to our families. That who are these people that we revere so much? And Rasulullah sallallahu himself spoke about them like this. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa spoke about them and it's authentically narrated. See, the Aisha narrates, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam traveled from the east to the west and looked for the purest of people to bring this lineage together. And this is the reality of them. So we'll go through very briefly, inshallah, the specialities. The first speciality of the Ahlul Bayt is that they are not recipients of zakah or sadaqah and they, neither can they receive it from anyone. So you cannot give zakah or sadaqah to the Ahlul Bayt, neither can they receive it from anyone. And an example of this was Imam Al-Hassan one day when he was very small and there was a tray of dates that came to them in the form of sadaqah. And Imam Al-Hassan partook of these dates and immediately Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi stopped him and made sure that he took it out of his mouth and instructed him, take it out. 
And he told him that we do not partake of anything that is sadaqah. That's the purity of, fam of the family. We're talking about the lineage, the pedigree of this family. Zakah is basically the impure wealth of a person. This family is so pure that they cannot even take that. Subhanallah. Yet zakah can go to anyone needy. But in this case, even if they are needy, they cannot be recipients of zakah because of the purity of their lineage. So this is the first speciality that we learn of the Ahlul Bayt. The second being, as we discussed, the lineage and the heritage that they are more exalted and virtuous than anyone in the world. They are the greatest of family. They're the most purest of family. You know, something that always comes to mind when I discuss this is when we take the royal family of today in Buckingham Palace and you see how invested people are in their lives. Amongst our Muslims, I've heard many Muslims discussing their entire family. They know who the sons are, who's the grandchildren, who's the next in line, who died, who's still alive, what's the queen's likes and what's her dislikes. But yet we don't know these intricate details of the Ahlul Bayt. Who's the true royal family? Who's the custodians of Jannah? When we speak of this family, if you just want to know who they are, what do we know? Man kuntu mawla fa aliyun mawla. Whoever I am a master to, Ali is his master. You want to know who's Fatima? Sayyidatun Nisa'i Ahlil Jannah. All the women folk will be under her authority in Jannah. I was speaking at the madrasa the other day, and I'm asking the young girls, do you know that you're going to be in the company of Fatima to Zahra binti Rasulillah? In Jannah, we all want to go there. But whose authority are we going to be under there? And how important it is for us to build that nisbah with them from here. Who, who are we going to be with? All of us men. There's not going to be any old people in Jannah. We're all going to return to youth. And who is the leaders of the youth? Wal Hassan wal Hussein Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah. The leaders of the youth of paradise is Hasnain Karimain. So our entire Jannah, the custodians of Jannah, the owners of Jannah is the Ali Bayti Rasulillah. How much do we know about them, but yet we want to be with them? So a very important lesson of why we gather and why we use this time, it's more edu to educate ourselves so that we can build that ta'alluq and nisbah with them. On the day of Qiyamah, all lineages, all relationships will come to an end. Except the lineage and the relationship to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's a very beautiful narration of this. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib from Sayyida Fatima to Zahra had a daughter, Umm Kulthum, and she was quite young. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, after hearing Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that on the day of Qiyamah, all relationships will come to an end except those that are connected to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab was quite senior at the time. He goes to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib and proposes to Umm Kulthum. Right? And she was much younger than him. So Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib at first was a bit reluctant because he was wanting her to marry his nephew at the time. But Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab insisted. And he says after hearing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying that all relationships on the day of Qiyamah will come to an end except that is connected to him sallallahu alayhi wa And he insisted and eventually he got married to her. We look at the likes of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, Dhun Nurain, married to two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When he, at, on the day of Badr, Sayyidina Uthman could not participate because his wife had passed away. So he was sad, he was upset. And one of the reasons why is because that connection with him and sallallahu alayhi wa was cut off. But what reward did he get for that? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the other daughter. And that's his continuous link to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we see that in Sayyidina Uthman. We see that in Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. They wanted to be connected to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how were they able to be connected to him? Via the Ahlul Bayt, via Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's progeny. So this is a unique trait that belongs only to the Ali Bayti Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another trait of this is that they had unique terminologies used for them. And they were known as the Ashraf of the time. So, there were certain terminologies that were used only for the Ahlul Bayt to differentiate and to know who they are 
they were known as the Ashraf, meaning referred to as Sharif or Sayyid. And in the Hijaz area, this was something that was very prevalent at the time. And something very interesting to note about the Ali Bayt is that how they knew the lineage of Imam Al Hassan and how they knew the lineage of Imam Al Hussein is there was a point in time where the, the descendants from Imam Al Hassan were referred to as Sharif, whereas the descendants of Imam Al Hussein were referred to as Sayyid. Something very important for us to note is that because of their nobility, they were referred to by honorable titles. And this shows us, it teaches us why we show reverence to them, why we show so much importance to them. We don't just refer to them anyhow. How do you mention their names? That's why we say Sayyiduna Imam al Hussein, Sayyiduna Imam al Hassan. And when we are teaching this to our children, teach them with these names, with these sanctified names of honor that they were given. This family of Rasulullah. So, a very important point to note is this was one of the very unique traits that only belonged to them. And that's for all the descendants from Ali and Fatima and even the other children of Sayyidina Ali from the other wives. But specifically for the Hasnain Karimain, it was Sharif and Sayyid to differentiate who's from Hassani and who's from the Husseini lineage. Moving on, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also another trait of the Ahlul Bayt, something for us to note, is regardless of however disobedient they are, we must still show honor and respect to them. Regardless of however disobedient they are, as long as they do not disbelieve and do not commit kufr, we should always show reverence and respect to them, regardless of whatever it is. And the reason for this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Innama Allahu ankum ahla al bayt wa yutahirukum The ayah of Tathir, where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the Ahlul Bayt, the Ahlul Kisa of Rasulullah sallam, has already been purified. They've been purified from all sorts of impurity. So therefore it is our duty and you will be rewarded for doing this, for showing honor, respect and adab to the family of Rasulullah sallam, even if you know they are disobedient in current times also. If you know he's a Sayyid, and even if you know he's perhaps not on the right track, just by showing him honor because his link goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you'll be rewarded. And just for knowing that that link goes to Imam al-Hassan and Imam al hussein it shows us what an impact they have, that the entire nasl is purified. Jannah is forbidden for their bloodline. Which other bloodline can boast this? That Jannah becomes forbidden, Jahannam becomes forbidden for the bloodline of Al Hassan wal Hussein. As I mentioned earlier, that they were referred to as Ibn Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to often refer to them as that. He used to refer to them as these are my sons, Al Hassan wal Hussein. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, at the time of his own son, Ibrahim, he mourned the death of him. But before the passing of Al Hussein, he already mourned and he cried and he wept. 50 years prior to the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. So this shows us, we think that only Karbala only happened afterwards. This knowledge of Karbala was already prevalent in the time of Rasulullah. As Imam al Hussein was growing up, it was a known fact amongst the Sahaba that they knew what's the destiny of this young boy. And they knew what was going to happen. And that's why Nabi was so cautious. And he's to make the Sahaba cautious that beware how you treat him. Imam al Hassan, he gave up the position of leadership. But Imam al Hussein's sacrifice was giving up his head, but not giving his hand into Yazid. So he gave his entire life to save the deen of Islam that you and I are enjoying today. And wallahi, it is so sad that we enjoy the deen. We want to practice the deen, or we try to, but we don't want to be affiliated or close or learn more about the Prophet ﷺ. And as I mentioned earlier, people know so much about the royal family of Buckingham Palace, but they don't know the Ali Bayti Rasulullah. You don't know the names of the family of Rasulullah, who these children were, who were their children, who were, who were their children, and so on and so forth. Moving on, because of time. The Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah, one of the unique characteristics of them, it is mentioned that as the stars are safeguarding the inhabitants of the stars, uh, of the sky, the stars, one of the quality of the stars 
is to safeguard the inhabitants of the sky, sky. And the quality of the Ahlul Bayt is safeguarding the people on earth. One of the reasons why the earth and the people are saved is because of the inhabitants of the Ahlul Bayt. And this we see from the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned that Ya Rasulullah, I would not cause any form of destruction whilst you are within them in that earth. Subhanallah. The lineage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is our salvation. Our entire dunya is protected sanctified, protected. Why? Because the bloodline of Rasulullah is amongst us. Subhanallah. And who that bloodline comes through? al Hassan and al Hussein. That's the bloodline that safeguards us on earth. Just as the stars are safeguarding the inhabitants of the sky. Then as I mentioned, what's so important for us and why we need to build this allegiance? is one day Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he's complaining to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about what people are speaking of him. And we all know when it comes to the merit of Sayyidina Ali, he was the differentiating factor of a mu'min and a munafiq. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, Ya Ali, none loves you but a mu'min and none hates you but a munafiq. Sayyidina Ali is the one person that has two extremes. People love him excessively and people also hated him excessively. But that was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Right? The characteristics and he, wallahi, is a discussion on its own. So one day he comes and he mentions this Rasulullah sallallahu So Nabi sallallahu alayhi says, Ya Ali, aren't you pleased that you will be amongst those that will be behind me entering Jannah first? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned who's going to enter paradise first. He's going to have his wives on the side and behind him is going to be who? Ali. Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and not only them, those that also loved them. This is what's important for us to note. Why do we build that nisbah? Why do we connect to them? It's because we don't want to just enter Jannah in third class seats. We want to be in the first class with Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib entering. Important for us to note. Drum it into your children. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, those that love me more than you love yourself, you place me before yourself. You place my family before yourself. You place my children before yourself. And your, my entire essence, my your personality is after us. You will be on the same rank and station as me on your Qiyamah. This is obviously not, not telling us that we'll be equal, but we'll be ma'iyya darajati yawm al-qiyamah. On the same level, same rank of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his Ahlul Bayt, that's if we place them as a priority in our lives. We claim love. We claim love of the Ahlul Bayt. But how much of a priority are they in our lives? We claim to be Husseini. We claim to be Panjatani. We love them. We speak of them. But how much of a priority are they in our lives? Our Iman is incomplete up until they are more beloved to us than ourselves, our own family, our own children. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab showed us this. That he gave a higher form of compensation to the Ahlul Bayt than his own children. Why? Because they are the blood of Rasulullah So priority. How do we prioritize Ahlul Bayt in our life? And the last two inshallah and we'll conclude. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa also said of serving the Ahlul Bayt. Find any excuse and reason to serve them or do a favor for them. Why? Who's going to pay you back for that? On the day of Qiyamah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself will pay you back for your efforts in serving the Ahlul Bayt. And how are we going to be paid back? Is we are going to be worthy recipients of his Shafa'ah. On the day of Qiyamah, you are going to be, everyone is going to be nafsi nafsi on their own. We are all going to be in need of the Shafa'ah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But who's going to shine bright on those days? is the one that served his family, the Ali Bayt. And this is something that he himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, that if you serve my Ahlul Bayt, if you find any reason to do a favor for them, I myself will repay you for that. That's a guarantee from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, to end off, and wallahi, this is so much of motivation for us to want to love them and build that affiliation to them. Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says in a hadith, I'm just going to go through the English very quickly. He says, 
The person who desires that his age be lengthened and he wishes to be granted and all his wishes to be granted, then he shall maintain good relations with my Ahlul Bayt after me. If you want your age to be lengthened, you want all your wishes to be granted. It's dependent on how you deal with the Ahlul Bayt after him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then he says, when whoever doesn't do this, and whoever doesn't maintain good relations, and this will obviously be the opposite effect. Your age will be decreased, and he says your face will be blackened on that day of Qiyamah. Just by showing gustakh to the Ali Bayt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So our entire Iman, our entire Shafa'ah, our Jannah, our Deen is dependent on them. And wallahi, it is so important for us to reflect upon this in these days. Is yes, we can speak about them throughout the year. But we use these days and these moments where we excessively remember them and charge our batteries for the rest of the year. We charge ourselves with the love of the Ahlul Bayt. Rejuvenate our Iman because this is the days that they sacrificed themselves. This was the day where the water supply was cut off from the Ahlul Bayt. It was from the seventh onwards. Those that I will be custodians of the fountain of Kothar were denied even a drop on the dunya. And yet the people that oppressed them expect to be drinking from that fountain of Kothar, from the grandfather of Al Hussein. But Wallahi, this family is so merciful that even on that day, it's our Iman that will tell us that they'll still forgive. This is the nature of the Ahlul Bayt. So this is the time that we use to reflect upon their lives, to remember them, to take their names, teach our children who these people were. And inshallah, from tomorrow night, we will be getting deeper into the events of Karbala. What transpired exactly during these nights, from the 8th, 9th and 10th? What happened? What were these people going through on the plains of Karbala? This afflicted land, the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein, the greatest Urs in the universe. There's no greater Urs than this of Sayyidu Shuhada Imam al Hussein, standing with 72 companions in the plains of Karbala. And who's the opposition? Over 20,000 Yazidi soldiers. This is the fear. They weren't just standing confidently, they were standing with fear before only 72. And who was from the 72? Amongst them were women and children. But wallahi, the Yazidi soldiers were standing in fear. Why? These are not just ordinary faces. This is the faces of the progeny of Ali Fatima. The progeny of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they had this fear. That is why even though it was only 72, they kept on calling for reinforcements. People were coming from all over, the Yazidi soldiers, until it amounted to over 20,000 standing before 72 people disarmed no weapons they did not come to fight but so much of fear why that's the lineage of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so there's many lessons that can be taken from karbala many lessons that are prevalent in our time that we can reflect upon not just leave it to a narrative but reflect upon why what happened what's the reason what makes one husseini one makes one yazidi these weren't just two people they embodied something else. They embodied something far greater. What can we learn from what transpired in Karbala? So inshallah, to continue with this discussion, we will delve deeper into Karbala and the lessons and our love and venerations for the Ahlul Bayt inshallah tomorrow. And on Monday night, inshallah, the discourses will take place in the masjid. With these words, وَمَا تَوْفِقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Nare Takbir Nare Risalat Jazakallah Hafizah, and, and as he has just said, tomorrow and Monday, inshallah, we will continue with the story. Uh, there's just a few more announcements before the Adhan for Isha, and then we will proceed to the Masjid. Thereafter, don't forget, please, the Mass Zikr, please do stay. Um, it's something that we haven't had for uh, three years. Uh, so tomorrow night and um, Monday night, inshallah, the same program again, but this time in the masjid. So please, those who are uh, watching online and listening on the radio, please do make your way to Habibiya Sufi Masjid. Um, after this program and also after the zikr, there is an announcement. Sal Sabil Sharbat will be distributed in honor of the Ahlul Bayt and Shuhada Karbala. 
by Bizbe Shiragi Fakir Chisti International and the guidance of Hazrat Sayyid Mohsin Ali Shah Chisti Nizami Habibi Rahmatullah after the lecture and after the mass zikr as well. And then once, um, just to end off with, uh, I posted this the other day on our, um, on our Facebook page. And um, if you want to learn more detail about exactly what Hafiza will be expounding on uh, tomorrow and Monday about the events of Karbala, and especially for the youth, go onto your Facebook page, Habibia Sufi Masjid Cape Town, and you will find every single day up to this morning, the seventh day, all the events that occurred with Imam Hussein and the, and the, uh, and the Ahlul Bayt. Uh, it's very informative, simple, easy to understand, but it's something that you need to carry over to your children. I was very young. My father used to take me. Uh, his name is Hassan, by the way. He used to take me to my teacher's house on the fifth night for the Majidis. Even though I was very young to understand Urdu and Farsi, but the essence of the practice regularly every single year, it became ingrained in me like with so many of you elders. And this is what we need to do. We need to pass this message on. As Hafiz Sabi said, our youth, we say, Islam zinda hota hai har karbala ke baad. This was Allama Iqbal, his famous poem, which means Islam is revived with every Karbala. Karbala happened 1400 years ago. Where is our Karbala of today? Do we recognize the Yazidi ideologies that are out there today for our youth? Because Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan are the leaders of the youth of Jannah. So this is our, my appeal to the youth. Go and find out more about what actually happened. So with that, I am going to call upon uh, Imran Parker to lead us in the salami. And then remember after Isha, please proceed to the masjid uh, for the next program. Please stand respectfully for our salawat and salam. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna Allah wa malaykatu yusalluna ala nabiya ayyu al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Salaam Hussain Ali Sultan Bataha Salaam Hussain Ali Sultan Bataha Salaam Shaheedan Gulzar Zahara Tumhari shahadat na bhoolegi ummat Tumhari shahadat na bhoolegi ummat Qiyamat talak shaheed muazzam Zamane ne dekha Zamane ne dekha tha jo karbala mein Qiyamat se pehle qiyamat ka alam Udhar kofiyo ka hazaro ka lashkar Idhar jani sara ne haq kul bahat taar Udhar laay talwa roti raar khanjar Idhar aay tayyar kafan bandhe sar par Bawaqt juma or dasve muharram Bawaqt juma or dasve muharram Tasajde me sarib Nishere khuda ka 
रवाना हुआ पी के जामे शहादत अली का सहारा जिगर फातिमा का सलाम सफी है लेकर बर कुछ भेजो मिले जिनके सद के नई जिंदगी है ये इथारों कुर्बानी उम्मत के खातिर के एहसान मन आज तक उम्मती है सलाम हुसैन आले सुल्तान बतहा सलाम शही दान गुल जार जहारा सला तू असलम सैदिया रसूल असलामीन असला शुहदाय कर बला اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلي وفاطمة وحسن وحسين وآله وأصحابه بعدد كل مخلوقاتك اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين